This is a HeadGum Podcast. Adam, I always give the guest a choice of where they want to sit. Uh, I'll do red. Okay. Thank you. I, that's... It's, it is uh, nerve-wracking to come into a podcast room and not know which it? seat is the, you know, there's like therapy your first time and you're like, am I on the couch or am I in the On your on a chair. scale of one to 10, how nerve wracking is that experience? Super nerve wracking for me. So you go 10. Yeah, well, nine. stakes aren't that high. I was at eight. eight. Right, it's that's like why I was gonna say one. <laughs> well, you're, you're- I'm a different person. Different I'm guy than me. You seem to be more- is, Yeah. You seem to be more at ease. <laughs> I am. <laughs> and I can see. Um, <laughs> How I, are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Thank you. I'm so sorry that I, I, I missed yesterday. Uh, well, for a little backstory, um, the reason I changed my shirt was uh, Adam was, uh, and this is all relative, uh, late to uh, coming to do the podcast. Uh, again, relative. Some would say a little late. Some would say that's egregiously late. It was egregious. Uh, do you want to tell him how many minutes you were late? I don't actually know the... the I do. The, oh, I'm sure. I, I figured. I would say probably 45. For 56 minutes 56 late. minutes. 56 minutes There's late. traffic. Now, you live in New York City. I do. I do. And where do you live? Harlem. Harlem. Okay. Um, you've heard about the subways. Yeah, I wasn't coming from my house. Oh, okay. So where were you coming from? A charity event. I didn't, I'm asking you where, not what, not the thing. Oh, but where sorry. did this charity event take place? A uh, golf course. <laughs> <laughs> where was the golf course? Ridgewood, New Jersey. Oh, so that is traffic. Yeah, it was traffic. Based. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. I thought, I, I, I didn't know about the charity event. That's uh, okay. And, and to let everybody know, you were raising money uh, as part of a, a event to raise money to... Uh, complete the genocide of the Native American Indian, which is on, not something I'm uh, about, and I don't... You don't have to be. I don't, yeah, no, I mean, uh, look, I'll take the stage time. We're not but, a preachy organization. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great, that's good. Yeah. You don't proselytize, you're not out on the streets. What are no. you raising money for? It was actually um, for under underprivileged kids to... <laughs> I'm sorry, I got bored. No, that's fine, It's it can be boring. Um, I understand. I, for, for, I, if, especially if you're from privilege and you don't know. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, it'd be totally something you can't privilege. identify. Yeah. Uh, it's for underprivileged kids from uh, mostly black and brown communities to get out. On hey, a that's racist. I don't. That's racist. Okay. Nicole, push the racist sound effects. Do you have a sound effect? Yep. How much does that happen? A lot. <laughs> for me. I mean, we, we have. You do have a lot of. Yeah. Uh, comedians who also have podcasts on here yeah. so i would assume that like the austin texas group probably. what should my what should my uh racist sound effect be i'll put it in post but i feel like it should be something kind of cutesy because you, you don't want to like start like, wah, wah. like shirley temple going <laughs> i made a whoopsie <laughs> yeah <laughs> like a oh, i've actually got that we'll be hearing that later probably <laughs> oh great um <laughs> anyway <laughs> something it should be like something that was race, uh, like a racist trope, right? So it should be like, oh, uh, mammy, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kingfisher from Amos and Andy, or, or the you know, Black Crow, uh, Heckle and Jekyll, or yeah. whatever, yeah. or like a Paul Lynn, like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> or like the um, the vaguely Jewish sounding uh, animals on. The Flintstones, when they'd have to do something, they go, you mean at the, oh, well, at the bank. it's a living. At the bank. They oh, were yeah. always at the they bank. Always was, at the bank. Flintstones Jews. always had to go to the bank. <laughs> and I would always be like, is this, is, was banking such a priority? And It like, was a big deal. It had just been invented. It was kind of a big deal. The concept was You think it went life changing bank? <laughs> like, I think there was a, a big, like, I don't think it was no, as important. I think important. it went wheel, pillow, bank. Bank. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then, and I... It was definitely a Jew. <laughs> it was definitely a Jew. 100%. Um, well, they got their hands in everything. Jesus. Mm, especially the weather we do. Oh, my God. That's the craziest. Hasn't it been nice out? You're welcome. That's, uh, well, that's my joke. But, um, <laughs> oh. 
No, there. Remember the guy from I want to say Tennessee who's like a state senator, and he went on this fucking tie. It was about two, three years ago. Not the Marjorie Taylor Greene space laser. No, 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 no. This is prior, pre that. Pre that. Um, and he went on this whole thing. It didn't start this way, but it ended up like where I'm sure his handlers, handlers like shut him up. You know, he was a he was like a younger black guy from Tennessee, I believe, and he went was talking about something. Then it took this went off the rails and he was talking about how jews control the weather was it herschel walker no 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 this is okay, pre-herschel he walker. walker herschel walker had a slip up too well it was well, well that's similarly generous to say slip up but yeah <laughs> but in that vein where yeah. he was like off on a trail and then was like and there and the people controlling the weather and it's like well, what people? oh really did yeah. he yeah yeah well um so yeah i would i would just talk about that like um how I had no idea, and this is why didn't anybody tell me? And I was talking about my relatives, and then calling them, and they're like, "Yeah, we control the weather." And then <laughs> this whole thing about, um, and then you know, going, "You're welcome," you know that. <laughs> yeah, number. no, it's I uh, control the what, what? Who? I mean, there are some crazy, bonkers conspiracy theories that are just like I head scratching. But I the get, weather is hard. I get a like the idea that uh man that that uh, we faked the landing on the moon i don't believe that but i can see in fact i have a friend i haven't talked to him in quite a while but uh, <laughs> it was a good friend who i think i talked about it on this podcast before maybe somebody else's but we i was hanging out with him and his wife his then wife uh at his uh apartment in atlanta and then we were like hey let's go up to the corner and grab some beer i was like all right and there was like you know eight of us whatever and so he and I went and we're walking up. I've known this guy for fucking ever, right? He did the, uh, my first tattoo, right? Cool. And uh, and now everybody's going to know who it is. Um, and we're walking there and I don't even know how it came up. But he said something about, you know, we didn't land on the moon. And I, of course, thought he was joking. And then he fucking was yelling, they, you know, read about the Van Alden radi right. radiation belt. Like, what? That's the only way I know about it because I read, I researched it after he was screaming at me how we didn't land man on, on the, the moon. moon. And, um, and man can't uh, survive going, t taking bombarded with that kind of radiation past the Van Alden, but whatever it is. So, and I can see the uh, fictionalized plausibility of oh they did fake it and all that stuff and 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 none of my questions are logical uh you know uh, uh, trying to use logic to go what what would be in it for us and wouldn't the how many people would have to keep that a secret and etc cetera, etc cetera. and it just didn't matter and but see, like something like that, I get. I don't believe in it, but I understand how you your brain goes that way. Aliens uh, uh, created the the pyramids. Okay, I don't believe that, but whatever. But Jews control the weather is so bizarre and and requires. And I, I'm sorry, you're going to have to tell me, give me some kind of proof that is beyond. Yeah, the, of course they'll deny it. Yeah, well, I mean, have we, has there ever been a better cover for people that control the weather than the people that are complaining about it the most? Interesting. Come full circle. Truly, because, like, I've never heard a Jew, and I know all of them, mm -hmm. that's like, isn't it beautiful today? <laughs> never. Everybody is like, well, Jews it's love cold, to complain. It's too hot. They love to complain. It's humid, it gives them something to a, complain yeah, about. It's dry heat. No one ever, yeah. you never heard a Jew be like, it's gorgeous today. So yeah. the fact that we would ever control that thing that we're complaining about, it's like a, a true diabolical scheme. Yeah, what what you do you know? get out of it? Well, I think that what you Jacking get out of it is money. Rates? Yeah, I think it, well, I it's guess. money. It's money, right? Like people, I remember when, when there was like people being like, well, don't listen to the, uh hurricane is just big tape you know like remember when they would be like tape up your doors yeah and they'd be like that's what they want you to do is Staples like yeah yeah the sta yeah it's, like, and, it's the same yeah. type I, I always thought that was code for like jew in my opinion like right as a as a as a new york C city kid whenever i heard anything that was like they are mm -hmm. jacking up the price or like they 
that was always just like Jews. Right. <laughs> like it's it's and just, now it's Asian American. <laughs> You know, yeah, I I'm know. just glad I mean, we passed the book. Changed quite dramatically. Yeah. Now I'm sorry. Is it is it uh, is it Pali or Pulwai? <laughs> the pronunciation. So you asked me that the first time we we met. Really? Yes. I'm, oh my god! You I'm did that bit with me? <laughs> stealing my own joke I'm, <laughs> that I'm not even aware. You did that bit with me the first time we met, which is I don't know if you even remember this, but was it the gravid water? No, oh. I was twenty. Three. Oh, I do remember. And you, you were when you were twenty-three. You, know, you direct. You and Bob got hired by Montreal to like direct sketch at Montreal one year. Really? And the two sketch groups from New York that they took were <gasps> me and Ben Schwartz and Bobby Moynihan and and his group. And oh, this is you were working or something. Familiar. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, weird. was, was Kristen Shaw and, uh, yeah, and Kirk Kristen and Kirk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That okay. was the other, they were, they were there and like oh, you, wow. it was your job to kind of like come in and give us notes and then, and then be the MCs of like the, right. the showcase, Yeah, you know, and we were, we, you know, we were so excited, like Bob and Dave are like, you know, like direct show and meet us. And the first thing he said, you're like roll calling, you're like, is it Palais or <laughs> yeah. why? And I was like sick <laughs> but i love it i'm glad to have that it. must have been somewhere in the back of my head just i'm sure it was I'm, I'm, I'm going, tickled let me be it, free <laughs> tickled that it like came all the way back and i only rem i mean obviously not to like guffaw but like you know that was a huge moment for us like that was a fun show i remember it that yeah was, it was that the was beginning, really fun yeah. it was the beginning of everything for us i mean we were 23 like the f crazy thing about that, that show was it almost didn't happen because we got stopped at the border mm. because we one of my friends was doing a bit and packed his whole bag full of avocados and you can't bring produce into it. Oh, he wasn't doing a bit for you guys with the border people. He no, was he doing was to us when we got there, like, ha ha ha, this is like. He, oh, that is dumb. So dumb. And it was funny, like. It, the way he did the bit, the kid is crazy. I don't know if you've ever met him. He's one of the funniest people alive. Who, who is His it? name is Gil Ozeri. He's no. now like... Oh, the avocado king. Yeah, the, yeah. Yes, that's how he's known. He um, He's like one of those guys, I'm sure every friend group, every at least comedian friend group has one that's like, I'm really just in it. I'm not in it for like the audience laugh. Like I'm in it to fuck with you. Yeah. For Ross the rest, Broccoli. Like, to be in your... John Benjamin. Or, yes. Yeah. It, it, Yes, Glazer. He's a lot of Glazer energy too, who's a, a hero of ours. And so we had to go to Montreal. We had oh, to drive wait. up. That everybody's, is crazy. Everybody's waiting at the rental car. He's the last one there on purpose. He's got this giant bag. He gets in the car, doesn't say anything. Sorry, I'm late. About four hours outside of the thing, he goes, Hey, can you reach into my bag and grab me my computer? I want to jot something down and Bobby's in the back and Bobby goes, yeah, yeah, which one is it? He's like, it's a big, big, like duffel thing. He's like, yeah, sure. He opens it up and he's like, <laughs> Gil, there's just like avocados in here. He's like, oh no, I must've taken the wrong bag. Everyone's like, fuck you, man. Like stupid bit, we were late, whatever. And then we get to the border with 50 avocados. Yeah. And they're like, what are you doing with these? And no matter what we said, they were like, wait, what? <laughs> we're going to the just for laughs festival yeah. they're like see we're professionals and they're like no i got that part <laughs> like what about the produce that you can't bring in and we were like i have no explanation like it was just and we had to sit outside the car and everyone's oh, like we're gonna brother. a freaking show it was like the it was a crazy yeah it, it, i was just talking to my wife about this this morning uh using it as an analogy for something else but it is it doesn't matter your uh, stature, your how attractive you are, your uh, wealth uh, or lack thereof. It going through the border and getting processed is how only it's only determined by the mood and the the personality of the person you whose line you get in. It's the you ultimate one through eighteen. Yep. <laughs> it's the ultimate doorman energy. Twelve, yeah, uh, twelve. Number 12, they're great. They'll let you through. Number 16 has had a bad day. They don't like the way you They're look looking at you, you and they're and they're like, "What you What do you What do you do?" They doing? don't like your kid, whatever. Yeah. It's the craziest random lottery. 
And sometimes it's great. Sometimes it works out really well. And sometimes it's a fucking bummer and people are assholes and you have no power, no amount of complaining, no amount of like, um, reason like, uh, uh, well, I have to get to a wedding or it doesn't matter. I, I always assume that there was a, a guy like a fictitious. You know, the Jews control the, uh, the border. The border, yeah. <laughs> of course. That's why we of can't. Every border, yeah. We're okay. contra- we're bad contractors. We yeah. can't get that wall up. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, uh, I I would imagine that there is some like higher up in the in the border control world that has to go to like big buildings and they try to get in and they're, and they're like I'm going to floor 19 and the dorm is like wait 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 where are you going <laughs> and they're like 19 and they're like no 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 pal deliveries around the back and then that guy walks away and he's like that's talent yeah that and guy's goes, good how would you like my friend, I couldn't board. help but notice your uh, <laughs> denial of my entrance. Here's a card. Call this number. Hang Someone's going to say no. Let it. Yeah. <laughs> you call this. Call this number. Let it ring twice. Hang up. Then call back. Let it ring four times. Hang up. Call back. Let it ring six times. Hang, hang up. up. Call back again. I'm going to answer, but my name is going to be Joyce. <laughs> You're going to just act like everything's fine. I'm yep. going to give you some coordinates. Go to that coordinate. Order me. Uh, it's a Chipotle. Order me <laughs> a chicken bowl. It's the new one. Uh, what's it called? It's a, it's like a spi- It's not the like a Chipotle bowl, but it's sort of mm. like that. But it's got chicken rice, being all the kind of regular base stuff. But it's got some. It's a newer thing with some additional thing. I know. Oh yeah. How about this? You go fuck yourself. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> You're perfect. You're on. <laughs> I need you at the. <laughs> Need you at the Canadian yeah. side of the Montreal, <laughs> upstate New York. Listen, there's a comedy festival <laughs> happening. Yeah, it, nobody's to know this. It is international, but nobody's to know this. <laughs> it's called Just for Laughs. Trust me, it's not just for the laughs. <laughs> Anybody who thinks they're funny, who's trying to be cute, trying to be funny, deny them. Actually, no, no, hold them until just before the show starts. <laughs> It's, it's so crazy that energy it's like doormen uh gar- parking garages that are almost full <laughs> food f- food trucks that aren't open yet you ever walk up <laughs> oh <laughs> you ever walk to a food truck that's not like there's a little you, surly attitude yeah like you know when you're like on set or something and one of the producers like yes. we, we got everybody a food truck and you're like cool and you walk over and immediately you're like i'll have and like hey we're not open yet <laughs> You're like, sorry, sorry. That's so crazy that you would say that because all of those things are controlled by Jews. All of them. Food trucks. I'm admitting. I know. That's crazy. I'm here to, I don't, I, I, I feel didn't like, know any of this stuff until just recently. Hey, so. How many hands, how many pots we have our hands in? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, yeah. Um, uh, the Yankee candle industry. Um, God, I mean, so for real, if you go down, um, you come out of the studio here and you go down Broadway mm-hmm. to Union Square on the east side of the street, you will see uh, the mitzvah truck, which has yes. been there for a while. And uh, I think I talked about this with uh, one of my past guests who was ex-Orthodox. Uh, and like Modi? Uh, who? Modi? No, Robbie Hoffman. Oh, I love Robbie Hoffman. Oh, she's so fucking funny. I didn't know Robbie Hoffman was ex-Orthodox. I, I don't oh, know. And, and yeah, and like Heredi, not just wow. not just Orthodox, but like, you know, Satmir, Heredi, one of those like serious Tunnels. Things. And, um, tunnels. And, uh, but I, like, I, I, this has just been a, you know, little joke observation, but like, man, the, um, the Orthodox Jews don't know what the word now means. <laughs> They don't, because for four decades, I've been seeing these things saying Moshiach is coming <laughs> now. now. Now, big letters. Now! I think Jews think now means sometime. Well, it's not, it doesn't. No. Now means now, sometime means sometime. Yeah, but you've been on 47th Street. It's like, now, meh, sometime. What? <laughs> pay, me when, when I, pay me whenever, you know? I don't know. I didn't have that kind of upbringing. Where, where were you born? I was raised? born in Stuyvesant Town. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I yeah. stayed there. I stayed there till I was like nine, and then I went to Chicago, which is why my accent is a hot mess. And then I... I don't, I don't really detect an accent. It's like 
just sporadic on which words sound like Midwest and which words sound like New York City. Say it's, say absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, there's Chicago. There's a hint. A hint. Yeah, it's just absolutely like orange. Orange. That's what I say. Orange. You're from the South, right? Uh, all over, but yes, mostly yeah. the South. Yeah, I feel like that's a, a common. Like, oh, say this is an interesting thing that um, somebody uh, I said this word and they go, "Oh yeah, you can tell you're from the South." I was like, "Why?" Because only Southerners pronounce it this way. But pronounce the word e g g. Oh, egg. Yeah, so I say eggs, and my friend Sean, who's also from the South, is like, uh, yeah, that's uh, only Southerners say eggs. For, like, it's just eggs, pluralized all the time. Oh, no, just A-Y-G-S. Oh, A-Y, as, yeah. as, as opposed to the correct pronunciation, eggs. which is E-G, egg. 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 Yeah, peg, egg. Yeah. Egg. Peg. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't work. When I say <laughs> yeah. eggs. I mean, there's no, a bunch of little weird. southernisms yeah. that. Well, that was one of my favorite in. bits of yours. Um, I forget which special it was from. It was like the voice. The, the, the oh yeah, it's the the crazy. Voice. It's why I, I. I mean, that's one of the best bits ever. But like, it, it, it is really wild. Is weird. It's wild how you can be in like Long Island. What is it? Where where, where does it come from? You can be in Long Island where it's like it has its own accent, right? And if you see a Trump flag, they'll come out and they'll be like, hey, yeah. get on my lawn. And you're like, where are you where from? Where are you from? Like yeah. Hampstead? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's It's, it's really strange, especially as you get uh, like kind of into like uh, rural uh, Midwestern farming stuff. And you're like, how do you have a Southern accent? Yeah. Or like, you, I think you, you said Alaska. Yeah. Alaska. That's wild. Like it's, it, and it does Hey exist. motherfucker, y'all yeah. don't want to fuck with me, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, how like, what <laughs> colorado yeah. like colorado it's like hey man you see these slopes you're like isn't this supposed to be chill well, that's racist too but um i also i didn't know racist they had that on kind you. of racist on you can we get the can we queue up the racist racist uh oh mammy, mammy. <laughs> how i love you how i love you mine you're on mammy uh, or, um <laughs> or stymie saying something from from uh, little rascals Jr. I or tell you. how about dynamite jimmy jj walker yeah, that's pretty good dynamite um shit what uh, so do you remember doing uh gravid water i did a lot of gravid waters uh, uh, for him for for a while because we, like there, it was a big one it was like they moved it to it was a theater yeah i think it was for the del close marathon one year that because it was like wasn't it at the chelsea movie theater that they that they had brought in like they were like, hmm. I think that's where it was on 23rd yeah. and like uh, 9th, the SVA theater. And it was like, yeah, it was big. It was like, does Tina, Tina Fey on that one or something? It was a big one. I don't remember. The only, I, I you know, a lot of the regulars, like there was, uh, I think Matt Walsh and course, Scott yeah. Adsit and uh, um, I'm not sure who was here, the New York versions, but, um, and it was the first time that I, improvise because i had done it i had done the acting part yeah. um oh let me explain what this is to the to the listeners sure um it's a brilliant idea it's a really cool idea where uh um steven what's steven's last name steven I was uh, just trying to think of that uh god damn it we'll think of it he had a brother that was in one of my improv classes too yeah S steven i don't know right <laughs> You got the internet over there? <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm in the middle of the tour. and uh, But I want to tell you guys about um, Athletic Greens One, which I actually have been using. And I bring some with me when I'm on tour that I steal from the headgum offices. I don't steal. It's not really stealing if you tell them you're going to steal it. I don't use the word steal. I just say take. But... So I take them anyway. I have a, had a bunch, but I ran out. Um, but I like it. I can't, you know, I'm not going to tell you it's, uh, you know, a miracle powder, but I take it because it seems like it'd be a pretty smart thing to do. Um, and it's actually kind of tasty. That doesn't bother me either. And I just like knowing that I'm getting those things, especially when I'm on the road and it's difficult to get those things. And let me just tell you something about the prebiotics, the probiotics, the gut-supporting um, 
uh, part of it. It you know, supports digestion, reduced bloating, keeps you regular, which means you poo. In a research study, 80% of participants noted less gl- gas and bloating after 30 days of drinking it. And 97% of participants felt that digestion improved after 90 days of drinking AG1. <laughs> well, I would hope so. That's three months. Okay. Nutrition that does more. Here are some fast facts. Uh, AG1 is made with bioavailable ingredients that work with your body, and its powder form makes it easy for your body to digest and access access the nutrient-dense ingredients in the formula. And it has all non-GMO ingredients. It contains no added sugar, so my wife will be happy about that. She's always going on and on about GMO. AGI helps fill nutrient gaps and supports your gut for healthy digestion. I said that. Just one daily scoop provides whole body benefits like gut, immune, and stress support. So start with AG1 and notice the difference for yourself. It's a great first step to investing in your health, and that's why I'm so excited to be partnering with them. Try AG1 and get a free bottle of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs. Those are the things that I use. I get them to put them on the road. They're in my, uh, take them on the road with me in my suitcase. And with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash senses. That's a $48 value for free if you go to drinkag1.com slash senses. Check it out. And uh, I'll see you in Lexington at the Opera House. Uh, but this will probably play way after that. So don't go to the Opera House. I won't be there. I will have moved on. I don't know. Where will I be? Ann Arbor, Columbus, Toronto, Chicago? I'm not exactly sure. But check officialdavidcross.com to see where I am on tour. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye. But it's a great concept. I, I, yeah, that show is so fun. It's so much fun. It's fun to watch. It's yeah. one of my favorite things. Like, I'm so excited to you know, be done with my thing so I can watch everybody else. Mm. And the really, like the masters, like Scott Adsit, Matt Wall, I mean, all uh, Tammy uh, uh, Sager, Sager mm-hmm. uh, are just, I mean, everyone is just, uh, just watching them. And it's a skill that I uh, am jealous of. I wish I had. And, and I did, you know, I did the acting part. Oh, again, to explain it. So this guy takes uh, roughly four pages mm-hmm. out of a uh, play. Um, most of them you haven't heard of. And it's just four pages. Could be the beginning of a scene, middle, uh, you know, something where, where people enter or whatever. And one person is the actor. It's usually given to an actor and uh, quite often somebody uh, works in the theater. And then, you know, there's like sprinklings of celebrities here and there and the the script they get is only every other line their their characters lines and then the so that's all you're getting is a script with you know say your character is jason then jason has you know approximately 32 lines and there's they don't make any sense and uh because the uh the other character uh, it's always a, t- a two-hander, always two people, and the other characters' uh, lines are missing. Then you do that with uh, uh, somebody who improvises the f- the line that's missing, and it doesn't matter what that person says; the actor has to say the next line, mm-hmm. and then the improviser has to f- kind of steer the the. And it's it's genius and it's crazy, and uh, um. And the improvising, I've gotten better at it as I've gone along, but it's really hard, and I'm still not that great. And the first time I did it, which was that show, I felt like, oh, I blew it. I just blew it. Like, it'd be in the sense that I was try- I was saying funny lines that didn't help make the whole thing. Like, when yeah. you, watch, you watch AdSit or... Yeah. I mean, you're like, th- he just did a, a real scene. Yeah. By making this stuff up, and now there's a uh, a baby in a closet that they adopted. And yeah, da, 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 and you get in the weeds real quick. Yeah, in in that show, I I I found uh, I never did it as an actor. I only did it as an improviser, and I don't think I could do it as an actor because like 
I feel like that would be really challenging to only know your side and to not. It's challenging, but uh, b- believe me, the improv is harder. Really? Because the 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 that's just not my skill, you know. Yeah, but you're so but but you're a great actor and a and a and a. Well, and, thank you, but it was it was, it, but uh, when you. When you watch like, uh, and you you were in a wheelchair, right? <laughs> remember? I remember the scene now. Yeah. yeah, that's what I think. That's why I it got a big really response funny. because it was like a breakup scene. You decided to be in a wheelchair, well, like at the a, end. At the end, yeah. I was sitting in a chair, and she she <laughs> yeah. was breaking up with me, and I was like, "You can't do this. You can't do this." And then she walked across the room at the end, and I was like, "Please!" And I wheeled <laughs> yeah. myself, and then it was like, "Oh well, that's why she's breaking up with him." But that was really funny. But that's a great example. Uh, that's there's no script there's nothing in there you were sitting down you happen to be sitting down uh because they they will tell you that much they'll go okay you're sitting down yeah at a desk yes exactly you don't know exactly where you are I, but that's it. i had seen it a bunch before i i did it because you know I, they had been developing that show for a while and i worked at the ucb mm-hmm. it, like doing anything cleaning cleaning the stage or whatever and so i would see it quite a bit while i was working and you could you could see who was good at it and who wasn't and the the one thing that i noticed about people that were bad at it is that is is the same thing that in improv the people that are bad at it is where they like ask a question expecting that to fill in the knowledge they don't have right and like that's how you get caught up in the you know someone two people go on a stage there there's nothing there you're just trying to like paint the picture right and so if you're asking like for example that a scene can be out of context someone's like thanks for coming to my birthday party dad yeah someone goes like what yeah right. <laughs> you know then the classic yes and it's like the the, the person who just called you dad is not going to yeah. be like that's right you're my dad like right. they don't have the answer right and so anytime and it always gets a laugh when you when you say what, because it makes the last sentence become out of context. Mm-hmm. So no matter what, in a in gravid water, someone's like an actor responds by because their line is, Oh, you're so petty. Yeah. You're the improviser's gonna get a laugh by going, What? Yeah. But then there's nowhere to there's, they can't go. respond yeah. again. Yeah, there's some there are uh minimal amount of rules but they're strict you yeah, know and, you ha- and it's like that was just always the shortcut is like just assume everything don't a- a- ask because they don't know these yeah. poor people don't know they're like <laughs> i just always looked at the actor's eyes and be like i'm so sorry that you, yeah. that you have that i have to do this but like you know they'd be like oh reginald and i'd be like reggie i'm sorry <laughs> like you know like yeah because now i'm fucking with you it's like it felt bad but it's such a fun show it's really it's fun and watching you know um you know i, I again like it's it's a such a great example is for you to take like you've been sitting in that chair and then you go and wheel yourself across oh you're in a wheelchair nobody's ahead, nobody's thinking that like i hope he pretends he's in a wheelchair right. you know what i mean you're just watching this thing unfold and now you've taken that tiny little piece of information and it you know, now you have to reconsider everything you've just been watching. Yes. You and know, that's what's so my favorite thing about that show is because there are things in place like improv. Some, I don't know if it was Adsit or like one of those guys was teaching me once Lutz or something. And was like a shortcut way to think about improv is that you're like, you know, I got in the Simpsons when they would like go into a dark room and you would just see eyes. Mm hmm. It's like that's what happens when two people walk out on a stage. They don't know where they are. They're just eyes. Mm-hmm. So you start to like turn on the lights really slowly by saying stuff. Right. So you're like, you know, you walk you you walk over, pretend you're getting coffee. No, he's this isn't anything to make fun of. It's not it's sorry. My phone's got a low latitude. No, it's a legit point. I'm just making a legit point. Okay, phony? Sorry. I apologize. It's fine. Okay. Uh, I was late yesterday. Like, yeah. Well, the phone is aware of that. Yeah. Um, but like you know, if I walk, if we're just sitting on stage and I walk over and and grab a coffee pot and I'm like, "Man, did I have a tough night last night, Bill?" Mm-hmm. It's like the light gets a little light brighter and it's like, "Okay, your name's Bill." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, right. like You're getting information. We're getting information. We work at an office. 
And then you just have to think, okay, well, we're working off his money's bill. He's had a tough night. Or you Bill is your lover. Yeah. Or, or Bill you go, is your or, brother. Or, or you want to subvert it that way. It's yeah. like, you know, you, the next line is just as important, if not more. You go out and you're like, you're telling me, I you really worked me last night. Now we're lovers. It's like, yeah, yeah. you know, you. It, and then you find out your brother. And then you find so out your next lovers. line is like, hope, don't tell mom. Yeah. You know, and it's like, now we're right. brother. And then, you know, but to say that that's just an easy way to think about it. I think that sometimes. Have you seen, I'm sure you have, TJ and Dave? Yeah, many times. I mean, the absolute kings. Greatest. Best, the greatest ever. The greatest, yeah. uh, I just worked with Dave. He's in this last show I did. Mm -hmm. And Tracy Letts plays my dad. Oh, wow. It was awesome. Oh, boy. Tracy Letts was amazing. I love Tracy. But Tracy Letts is the only person to ever sit in with TJ and Dave. They've only ever done shows. I, I saw a show at the Bowery. Uh, not Bowery, uh, uh, Barrel Theater. Um, with Tracy? Yeah, with Tracy, was where he? they did three three people. He said, because I, I, I did a movie with him, and he said that it was one of the most terrifying things he's ever done. But he still does it. He still does he's frequently. I, I mean, I, I would, I think I would faint. Pro- I would get a little lightheaded. Yeah. And like, I can't keep up with, I would never do it. I, I, not that they would ever ask and nor should they, uh, but I feel like I would just be a fucking albatross no. on whatever I'm no. telling you. And I've seen, I've seen them, I don't know, dozens of times. I always send people their way. And I yeah. say, you have to watch more than one show. You can't just watch one show. Cause yeah, it's no, completely different. It's like the, it's TJ, TJ and Dave is like a jam band to me. It's like, you know, you the sets can change every night, and you're gonna see like, you know. I don't know if, how they'd appreciate that. Um, I'll ask them. Okay, right. You want to do this? Let's do this. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, but I've seen, and I'm not exaggerating. I'm not being hyperbolic. I've seen, you know, eighty minute improv pieces where they play multiple characters that were uh, as poignant. And uh, amazing an evening of theatrical entertainment as I have plays that went through multiple rewrites, scripted yeah. with cast it's and amazing. sets and all that stuff, and special effects. I mean, I remember one in particular about a kid, uh, a kid who want who a kid. There's like a cul-de-sac, and this kid was kind of bouncing around from house to house, and then you learn that his dad you know, is like a, like a drunk or runaway or something. His dad's not there. And then the other, uh, de- another dad kind of befriends him and they go talk. It's like, it took this poignant term that turn that was, uh, you know, um, and sometimes they do, but uh, they're just the, the, the skill level of those guys is insane. And they're really slow and dramatic. Yeah. And like they, the laughs are huge, but they're not frequent. It's not like a, barrage it's more like a, a play you and, know? yeah and also when they when like one of them comes back you know they play multiple characters and uh, um and one of them leaves and comes back as a character that you haven't seen you forgot about 10 minutes mm-hmm. ago and then says some reference to something that you thought was totally innocuous you know uh and then becomes the focal point for this other thing is is it just they're they're you know brains or steel yeah, they're traps. The be- they're the best ever. I did, I did the thing with Dave uh, twice. We've done it where we <laughs> we were uh, Chicago Atlanta um, and we'd come out and go, hi, we're an improv group, Chicago Atlanta. Uh, <laughs> my name's Dave. I'm from Chicago and I'm Dave. I'm from Atlanta and together we're Chicago Atlanta. <laughs> and, uh, and then we would do the typical setup Okay, so uh, we're going to get a couple suggestions from you, and you will help us set the scene, and we will improvise, and everything will be completely improvised. And uh, But it's important, you know, the more information you give us, the better. And then we just go through this ridiculous 10-minute long asking questions about the what time is it? Is this AM or PM? And da da da. How cold is it? What's the dew point? You know, all these crazy things. It's and we keep saying it's important for us. We want to get everything right. Da da da. And then we'd go. I mean, it was a long time. Just silly, stupid shit. What, oh what is his zodiac sign? Okay, great. And um, 
uh, have either one of us turned an ankle before when we were kids? Okay, great. And then we would go through this whole thing and, uh, and we would start the scene and it would go about 45 seconds to a minute long. And then someone would die because they're allergic to something. And then we both yell at the audience like, you didn't say he was allergic to fucking the cereal. Come on. You know, and storm That's, off i love it that reminds me there's so many bits like that 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 like i love a challenge of the audience like that and then a, and then a like nah i'm actually not gonna do it like a buddy of mine named rob lathan who's one of the funniest guys uh i don't know i haven't seen him in a while but he i don't even know what he's doing but he used to do this bit where he would come out and he'd be like i am a speed eater and i'm going to <laughs> tonight break the record for eating you know you name it whatever it was like mm. he would buy like a hundred big macs or you mm -hmm. know 50 in in one minute and he would do the whole thing he's like are you ready is this side ready is this side ready are you ready to see me break the record for the mo and everyone would be like yeah 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 and he'd be like start the clock they put the clock on he'd be like on your mark get set go and the music would start and the clock would start and he'd start and around the one minute mark, you would realize he's not gonna finish. Right. He's not gonna finish. And then at like three, was he trying to speed eat or was yes, he just eating it, regular? No, uh, he was like, you know. Yeah. But he's a regular guy, and so yeah. and then he would like scream out one. <laughs> and then like he like really struggle <laughs> like start. You know, he'd be like two. He's like, oh god, and he, and they were like. 50 burgers left you know and then the, the clock would go off and he'd be like oh i didn't get it <laughs> that was it that was it and it was just like and then he'd pack up the burgers right. and then he'd be like i mean i guess do you want a burger and it was like so small and sad the end of it but the it was my favorite bit because mm -hmm. like the audience that and uh another i can't believe i'm just like shouting out other bits but Owen Burke, another amazing dude, used to do a bit called Level Knevel, <laughs> <laughs> which is he would come out in a full Evil Knievel outfit mm -hmm. with a music playing. Level Knevel. Level Knevel, dancing around, full music, helmet on, dancing, take the helmet mm -hmm. off, big show. And then he'd reach around his back and he'd pull out a giant level. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and he'd dance around and he'd take one chair and he'd move it. And he'd be like, are you ready? He'd take <laughs> another chair and then he'd put the level down and it would get right and he'd be like, yeah! <laughs> and it was, it killed me like every time. And then he would level someone's hat on their head and like, it was just so nothing. It was <laughs> yeah. so <laughs> But something, <laughs> something you might see somebody busking out in Washington Square yeah, Park. Yeah, it's like you would never, but it was the most, uh, I think it was like the most amazing piece of art. If I could like put that in a mu museum. Do you ever see, uh, John Glazer's bit about being a dreamedian. No, but I love every it, Glazer bit. I I don't I don't want to say it here because if he does it, I, yeah. I don't want to blow it. But it's a I'll tell you afterwards. But it's yeah, a please. very funny. It, you, it's just you know very much like you know John Benjamin or you know certain comics where they the whole thing is you know anti comedy or whatever. But it's like this long setup, and you're like, where the fuck is this going? Because you're never not fooled that it's not a comedian doing a bit. You Which know? is why what I love. It's like that yeah. there is I hate And that. when you realize the joke, you're like as I remember I was sitting there, it was at a uh, the old uh, UCB and um and just uh, going like, Oh my god. Because I was uh, slightly ahead of the audience mm -hmm. by maybe seven seconds mm -hmm. tops. But I realized what he was doing, and I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, you motherfucker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he just took seven minutes of our... <laughs> oh, yeah, on purpose. <laughs> yeah, on purpose. I mean, he's he's another one of those improvisers. Like, I've seen him... I've done a show with him where he will play one character the whole show and have three lines, and it'll just, like, he'll put them perfectly, and he won't press, and he won't come out for another scene, and he won't do anything. Yeah. But he's like, but wait for this character. I'm going to do it three times, and that's it. It's like, he's just... He's he's the best. He's also such a nice bleeding heart. He's, he's a second city guy too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, pinata full of bees was his. Uh, that's like a famous sketch show that like was passed around on 
on a VHS when I was a kid. Oh yeah. It was like, yeah, uh-huh. him and polar and stuff. And like, it's like, have you seen this sketch? And this sketch was all pinata. Full. I think it was called pinata full of, full of bees. Uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, I mean, I feel like I'm. There's so many sketches of yours that are like. Do people? Is that a big? Are people constantly referencing? In our young, like when people come up to you, like oh, this sketch, this sketch, this sketch. Yeah, but I like that. I mean, that's nice. It's the greatest. It's, uh, yeah, it's very, it's very cool. And uh, you know, a bunch of them I've forgotten. I need to be reminded of, but. Um, you know, uh, I know that. Do you want been... me? Is that, are you asking me? What I'm <laughs> yes, I'm asking. The call. Google me. All right, fine. The one where the um, band comes in and you're burnt. Up, yeah, you're Titanic. That. Yeah. That's pretty good. Um, is that what? Is this what you wanted? Nope. Okay. Uh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, I know that people. I've gotten. You know, somebody will send me an iPhone thing of like, this is our college group doing the audition sketch and stuff like that you get that a lot i mean that's like one of the best sketches i taught that and there was really yeah Yeah. i taught sketch for years uh there was an italian somebody did it oh man and it was an italian comedy group or it was on a tv show and all these people were like oh because they didn't say it was our bit they just made it like their bit and they i think they changed like two or three things but they're like you fucking assholes <laughs> whatever that's an american oh excuse me it's uh my wife that's hey you're on speaker oh um i i'd like a divorce okay um who are you to, where are you uh doing my podcast oh whoops um that's a but, dumb joke uh uh do you have a second or no i'm doing my podcast oh you're literally recording it right now yes i am okay well um okay i do have a question for you so call call me after okay i love you you're my one and only (laughs) okay bye that was nice yeah um i don't know if i'm gonna be i'm dying to know what that question is um well let's find out The tone of it didn't seem, the tone didn't seem urgent like that. No, she doesn't call with it. She doesn't call with urgent problem. No. What? Um, <laughs> uh, Adam would like to know what your question is. Um, uh, who, do, who does he think is going to win the election in November? Oh, no. No. Really? Not a, not about Israel v. Gaza? I feel like that's mm-hmm. right. That, oh, I'm sorry. You're breaking up. You're breaking up. She called she called you to ask me who I think is going to win the election? Yeah, that's uh she doesn't even know that A that I'm doing a podcast and B that uh, you're my guest. So, I'd say that those are poor improv skills. Mhm. And then you pushed her towards Gaza. Yeah. With your good improv skills. Yes, I thought this was a That was where we were going to succeed. That's yeah. where the to get us back on track. Yeah. Let's talk about comedy. Gaza. Comedy. All right, I've lost a few friends. Okay. <laughs> In the comedy world. <laughs> um, uh, Glazer. No, uh, Brett Gelman. <laughs> yeah. I don't Brett I don't Gelman won't work uh, with... Brett, smoke. What? I don't want any Brett Gelman. No. No matter what I say, I'm going to get a text now. <laughs> Positive or negative. You saw Brett's... Uh, uh, thing about his uh, Billy Crystal 700 Sundays thing. One of the best. Brad and I were on it, started on the same improv team. Oh my God. 700 it's Cats is. 700 Cats is so. One of the funny. That's a I, similar bit. Yeah. I saw that before I had seen any of the, the actual thing that he was parodying. I don't even, you don't really have to see it, but have you seen 700 Sundays? No. But I know Billy Crystal enough to know the schmaltz. That's Dude, like you. D- you. I mean, isn't it like you am I cannot dad prepare to, yourself really? for because it's theatrical. It's not just. Him. I mean, yes, it's tons of schmaltz from him, but the theatricality of it is so cloying and saccharine, and 
uh, I mean, I, I got about 30 minutes through. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. I, and I walked out and I was on the plane. Hello. Now, phony, that's where you phony. All right. Well, that's where the phony would come in. Oh, but. mammy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it's it was I, I did watch it on a plane and I was like. Holy shit, this is so like he there's a point where he opens because the the stage is like his house I mean that, like this. Yeah, that's the stuff that's Oh dude, it's I like, mean, does it open with like a walking bass and then he's like, Oh, I didn't see you there. <laughs> or does it open with that? Or <laughs> I hope I don't remember. Uh oh, that sounds like my upstairs neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then the footsteps that yeah. are added to when he walks, walks across to the, the floor. window and puts yeah. the thing up. And, and then does a, like an awful, he's like, hello. And you're like, no. Oh. <laughs> there's a point where he opens up a door to a room in his house, the, the, on the, on the stage. And it cuts to like, it cuts to some video of him at his old family home in Long Island. Now. But now. he's now. Yeah. Like looking wistfully and, oh, oh it's they. just, um, you, you forget that the the majority the vast majority of people who go to see and support shows on broadway the, a show that runs has an extended run either uh tourists susceptible to marketing you know and, and not that there aren't good shows out there but i mean if you've got kids and they are screaming about going to see aladdin or frozen you take them to see it sure and uh and if you know that Hamilton is a cultural touchstone, you take them to see Hamilton, whatever. And then the other part of the Broadway audience, and it's 90% comprised of these two groups, the aforementioned one, and are these kind of the, the um, moneyed, uh, often gay, uh, kind of older New York Upper West Side, Upper East Side, mm -hmm. Village, um, you know, just Matt supporting, Nacrow. just supporting crap. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and it's just, it's so not clever, or interesting, or it's, it's, you know. Like my grandmother used to belong to the Manhattan Theater Club. And she would always be like telling us about some bullshit she saw you know like uh, alfred molina and king richard or whatever and no matter what you'd be like was it good she'd be like Fuck, i walked out it's like part <laughs> of it is that you know it's like i you know i wa uh, there was a uh, uh what i think i want to say john gilgood in something that was hugely promoted and popular and it was so bad i i don't think i've i'm trying to think if i've ever walked out of shows this might be the only one I walked out of. And it was a big deal, right? It yeah. was like... Uh, I saw John Larroquette as fucking it was, Sir, uh, Cyrano de Bergerac. It was... It was horrible. It just was so over-the-top directed and, and like people in the audience kind of thing. And like, oh, God. And uh, God, what was it? It was, um, it was Jonathan Lithgow, I believe. Oh, my God. I believe. And he was... It was a, it, it was a famous play. Non-musical. Not musical, and they were do they did the you know it was like a redone, repurposed, whatever it was, uh, Troilus and Cressida. I don't remember what it was, but it was like the hot ticket and da da. da and you go there and like Jesus, guys, this is awful. Yeah, have you ever done a play? No, I refuse. Yeah, I did it once. It's hard. Well, what did you do? I did a drama in New York at the um the one on a uh, what's it called. The roundabout, it was on 44th and yeah. 8th. Yeah. Um, and it was like a long run. It was like six month run. That's long. It was long. And I did it after I had had a failed sitcom that got like really trashed. Mm. And I was like, and people really hated me. And they were like, he's like bad. So I was like, he's the reason the sitcom, he's the reason the sitcom didn't work, which is like, Maybe true, but also probably no, Jews not. Jews control the sickness. Right. Yeah. We control the weather in a three yeah. in a multicam. But I, I, so I was like, I'm going to do a play. And then I did a play and it was really fucking hard. It was not fun. What was it? It was called Cardinal. Hmm. And it was, again, it was about Chinese immigration. Or not Chinese specifically, but the, the characters were, were Chinese. And it was like, um, 
Uh, and you and you played uh, Sing Hu Lo Pi. I did. I played yeah. a Chinese character. Just yeah. Push my range. <laughs> um, but I no. It was like you know. It was like I was a mayor of a small town. And it was about just all that stuff, and it was really hard to do that every night. And I don't want to say yeah. boring, but like boring. I think that's the fear a lot of people have. You know. Yeah. Is like. Um, and I and I was kidding. I would love to do a play, and and there's uh, I can't say anything yet, but I have a conversation tomorrow uh, with a writer and director of a limited a, run thing. Really, a play, play. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes and no. It will. It's definitely a thing that will be on Broadway, but it will be. It's more in the vein of. Um, Gosh, I don't know what you'd call it. Like vignettes? Uh, uh, like like the vagina monologues? Kinda. Kinda. Where you could be reading something and uh, so it doesn't it doesn't have near the like I've got to hit my mark. I gotta memorize mm. this and, and yeah, I that's believe the they're all kind of monolog I don't know. I'm I'm saying too much about something I don't know that much of that I ultimately may not even be a part of. I mm -hmm. hope to be and I was, you know, contacted about this. But um you know, uh, Bob Odenkirk and I, uh, gosh, I want to say a year and a half ago-ish, um, Bob had this idea. Uh, we would do, um, at the Geffen Theater in L.A., with a, an eye towards doing a run in New York, uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, with just comedians where, uh, like we talked about Bill Burr, Chris Rock, uh, Tim Heidegger, um, people who are, I think, capable of doing, pulling it off. And uh, and then we, Mamet wouldn't do it be, unless the Geffen did another one of his plays that the Geffen had said no to. And he got very, very upset and said, you can't do it. And then I think Bob might have even written something to him via the artistic director at the Geffen. And he still was like, no, 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 no. That would have been really cool. It would have been. I think it would have Glenn been Gary great. Glenn Ross is also like humor filled, you know, like you're going to get I, laughs. I think it would be, uh, yeah, I think I, uh, uh, it would be a great vehicle for, comedians who've shown acting chops um and it will be uh because it is going to go on broadway with uh not this idea is completely set we had this idea of they said they said no or mammoth said no and then i just learned fairly recently that they are going to do uh with bob and bill burr uh, among some other people. I don't know if they're all comics, but that will be happening on Broadway, I believe, in uh, midwinter. Of Glengarry. Yeah. And who's playing Ross? Who's playing... Well, Glenn, Bob's going to play Glenn, and Gary's going to be Bill. Gary's going to be Bill, and Bill's going to be Ross, and Ross is going to be Glenn. Not how I thought it. Yeah. yeah outside be, the box. They're tweaking it. Outside the box. Yeah, yeah. And who's going to play, play Glenn Gary? Uh, and Glenn Gary is played by Kevin Spacey. Um, you know, looking for a vehicle. Yeah, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And Timing the, is right. Yeah, and Kevin Spacey will be played by uh, uh, George Santos. Mm -hmm. And then George Santos got, is being played by Bernie Madoff. Yeah. Very interesting. I like the way you cast. Yeah. No, this isn't me. This oh, is something I read. Who about. you're working with? Um, I'm not. I'm. This is not me. This well, is. This song, I gotta else. get a ticket. Yeah. I always thought Bernie Madoff, dead, would make a good, interesting actor, character yeah. actor, in a, <laughs> in a play. Um, Bernie Madoff like a bandit. <laughs> um, Does have that you ever phone done? work for your things too, or just? No, I mean it should. Yeah, that it's should really, work for that. It's really. Um, kind of just like picks and chooses, huh? Yeah, that's not fair. Um, you should give your guest the option of a want want button. Well, it's not a button. It's just my uh, it, oh, that's my sentient. it's my tone. My uh, what do you call it? My uh, alert. That's really thing. funny. Some people have like bird chirps or like a, just like a chime, but you have a, the sound of of a, com of a joke dying. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah, of a of an awkward moment. What's the psychology behind that? 
Um, I mean, I ran my phone through the Helsinki Institute, <laughs> sent it up there, uh, spent six weeks, and uh, still waiting to you know, get the specific results. I can tell you kind of in a nutshell, there's uh, Superman complex, mm -hmm. there's uh, um, uh, prelated anxiety, there's uh, uh, dysfunctional uh, harmonic conversion, so all those kind of applications. Yeah. Great. Thanks. I'm so glad that we got this on the books after yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you are you shutting this down? Are we done? No, I just assumed that that was a natural ending point. Well, you should never make a assumption. No, no. Uh, you should never assume anything because it makes an ass you out of me. Okay, so we were done. No, we can be. No, I just feel like we're, I feel like you're trying to get me out of here with these. Where, what, how, why? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like these keep coming at a rate. I just, you asked me rate. about the fucking thing yeah, on my phone. they're coming at a rate and... faster now. And I've. <laughs> <laughs> you, th you think I'm, you think I took I, it easy and I then. I think you took it easy. I mean, in the beginning it was very friendly and now there's a sort of like, like, you know, when you have a house guest, it's like, I'm ready for them to be gone. What's the best way to do that? It's like start farting or something. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's what's I, now happening. Now I find, I don't, I don't. I've never really understood. I mean, I guess maybe if there's certain people, but I've never understood the trepidation, hesitation people have with like, oh, I got to get rid of this guy. How do I get rid of him? Yeah. You just say, "I'm, um, hey man, it's really late. I got to get, I got to get to bed." Yeah, no, that's different though. But, 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 but there, I, I think it's more of a youthful, a youth, youthful experience too, where you, when you're way younger and people are like surfing on couches and it's like how long is this guy gonna be here oh sure well that i've been on both ends of that <laughs> i mean yes, mostly yeah. the couch end yes um, oh i too. spent years overstaying my welcome yeah because you know, i had nowhere else to go and i had no money yeah you and, so you th and you think that that's part of i think like at least in my experience being on that couch you think that you're part of it it's like yeah we're all in this together right <laughs> <laughs> and the person who's couch you're on is usually like well i Usually, the, you're there because of the kindness of a friend of yours, but he has roommates, and it's the roommates who are like, "Hey, dude, you know, How enough's long is enough." How going to go on? Yeah. yeah, or yeah, and and it's a legit thing. And I've also been on the other end of that, where it's like, "Hey, man, this guy, you know, I could give him. I understand the situation, but he's. I mean, he's got to be out here in like two or three days." Have right? you also had that with? in-laws because i have i've also had that with like a parent that comes to stay and you're like wow you've been here Dude, a long time i mean it's a joke in my household but uh my well my wife will uh quite often bring up uh my sister or mother uh when she's shorthanded and needs help with our kid so um and they're happy to come up Right. Um, my mom takes a little bit. She's 80 a lot. And, wow. um, and, you know, she needs a little help here and there, but not really. She's very pretty self sufficient. She'll just plop down and play Candy Crush or just read. Um, it's, I mean, those are the only two things she does hmm. um, and complain that she's cold. Uh, oh, I didn't realize you were Jewish. Oh, yeah, yeah totally Jewish. Um, and well, they're more Cross Jewish than I am. A, I can't believe I didn't pick that up. Changed, uh, I believe it was changed at some point. Um, you came into Ellis Island as Christ, <laughs> as Christ, yeah. And they changed um, it to Cross, Jiminy Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I was Jiminy Christ. We gotta make this. Um, and uh, and, and I'm old, but I'm not that old. I'm that not Ellis Island, Island. <laughs> old. I met uh, your family. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, they did co come through. Yeah, they they were all from Leeds, England, and my dad was the youngest of five, and they all came over. Kind of, uh, I think Cross is three. a British name. I mean, it is British. Right? Oh well, I have dual citizenship, and when I was Safe. in the process of doing that, I learned. I and this is just uh, naivete on my part. Not, I just it was a dumb. I had no reason to think this, but I just always assumed, maybe because Eastern European Jews, I always assumed, or Western European Jews, um, that my family had not been in England that long. But then when they, they were doing the research that is part of the requirements for getting the dual citizenship, 
uh, my family goes back way, way, way longer than I expected. In England. Like in England, yeah, specifically in Leeds. I mean, it goes back at least to my great, great grandmother um, and great grandfather, at least. You're like third, you're second generation immigrant kind of, right? I mean, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm first generation American cross. Right, know? so which is basically makes you a dreamer. <laughs> yeah, that's why I voted for Obama. <laughs> yeah. The first time, then I was like, enough's well, enough. enough. I mean, yeah. Um, the tan suit threw me. I yeah, God. Handle it. What was he thinking? I was furious. Furious. I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm still, still, angry. still angry about it. I'm still angry that he... The audacity. Uh, the disrespect. Tan? To him, to come into that office and disrespect the office mm -hmm. by calling the White House a, a shithole... Um, that was Obama, right? Or am I thinking of something else? I think that was else? actually Trump. Oh, all right. But but you're right, though. It but, was. Uh, a, it's so gross to 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 talk about women mm. like Obama did, like recorded, recorded yeah, yeah. on television with with Billy Bush, like Obama did, saying. No, that was that was Trump. Yeah. Oh. You know what? I thought of way too late. Um, I have a place upstate in. Um, must be nice. Sullivan County. It's awesome. It's amazing. And I was just there uh, last week. Um, my daughter started school uh, again, so we'll be up there. Not, not as... She goes to school in Sullivan County as opposed to down here. No, no. She goes to school here, meaning our, our extended stays up there where we can stay for 10, 11 days, you know, outside of uh, winter break and spring, you know, are pretty much in your family. You, you call those squeakles, right? Those little breaks that you guys get. It, it's a, it's a, a or ch a chip rack, chip rack, you know. You yeah, get the chip rack. Um, it's one's a squeak hole, one's a chip one's rack. One's a chip rack. Right. Um, um, the we love called. The we love puns. Hole. We love puns. Yeah. Um, and uh, and there's, you know, it's it's less and less so. Um, but and I've been up there for uh, sixteen years now, something like that, and. Uh, but it's it's still pretty Trumpy, mm -hmm. you know. And there are a couple places uh, that I, you know, really there, there's one or one specific, and then there's uh, another one that's kind of adjacent to. It. But but it's there's one of my favorite bars and and uh, uh, sports bar, and really amazing food. Um, but there's there's a heavy Trump element to it, and I. Was and I always get in conversations with people, and there's a, a definite respect. Nobody, you know, and they know who you are, and they know like some of them, most how of them. you lean, like they, yeah, know yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and I've gotten in heated discussions, but nothing where it's like violent and an undercurrent of violence or anything like that. And even those are kind of rare. And and uh, again, most people know me, and you know, uh, it's all copacetic. But I, they, they, they had, we were passing around a like a fake box of cereal right called fraud flakes and it was biden it was like a cartoon of biden and it was all you know sleepy joe endorsed and all just dumb like really dumb puns and and these guys were just giggling they thought it was so funny and and it occurred to me later to because i know they're going to vote for trump but to ask and i'm i mean this in a very serious way like what information would you have to learn to not vote for trump forget about the opponent whoever it is forget about is there a is there a world in which you learn something either he says something or you find out this piece of like what's the thing that would make you not vote for trump do you think and not, I'm not saying you would vote for somebody else, but just to, uh, just go, to be like, I'm not, I don't think I want to vote for this guy. Yeah. What is the... Do you I, think that the answer somewhere could be like, run a child's sex ring out of a pizza place? Like... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think they would... Do you think that... Would, let's say that maybe. was. Like, let's yeah. say that all that... Let's say for some reason, all that 4chan bullshit yeah. actually turned out... I think it's 8chan. 8chan? 8chan? 8 a chan sorry i don't know how to explain what i'm saying i'm lost but like go back to what you said before <laughs> just that i would i uh, uh 
curious. It's not a gotcha question. It's not a trap. I'm not, there's I guess no I just right like, answer, wrong answer. But what is the thing? If you learn something. But there's nothing left. He's, he's that, Well, that's raped, kind of my murdered. point. That's, that's, uh, he's wait, molested? he's murdered? Well, I mean, I think we think he's murdered, right? He killed, he killed her when she fell down those stairs or something. <laughs> Was this a staircase thing? Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like yeah. she conveniently died. <laughs> You've seen her graveyard, gravestone, right? No, why was it? Oh, dude, I for real, you have to Google, uh, uh, um, Marla Maple. It's no, not Marla no, Maple. No, it's, it's uh, Ivana. Ivana, yeah. Um, it was her. Unless this is a, a thing, but I'm, I'm, I'm. I'd have to look on Snopes, but I'm almost positive, ninety nine percent. Uh, that she's buried on his golf course. Yes, I know that. So that's real. And it's like over by like, uh, like they just cleared out a little area of some bushes. I'm not kidding. And, and there's just, like a little grave marker. And it, and then it, it turns out it was for like tax purposes or some shit. There was some reason that benefited them to put her grave on like, you know, the 15th hole. Oh God. It's like a marker. It's like the tee off. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. That's so gross and weird, but I do think he's <laughs> the mother of his kids. Yeah, but I do. Th I mean, like, come on, he's definitely had people killed, or, 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 like, I could see him strangling a prostitute. Yeah, I, I, it's not. I, I can definitely imagine it. I can visualize it, but uh, I can rationalize it. But I don't. I don't think he personally would have done anything like that. I think he would, uh, but I don't think he did. But 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 even still, if they if if a voter, if it came out, it was like, holy shit, explosive news! Donald Trump in his youth killed someone. Yeah, he would probably be like, I was young, whatever, and people would be like, he was young, whatever. He had bone spurs. Yeah, I don't think it would matter. I, uh, that's just the question I would put to people. You know, do you think there's a thing? Um, I'm, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. I, next time I'm up there, I will definitely, if it, if it's an organic, if it comes up organically, um, I will definitely ask that. But, um, it was something that occurred to me when I was coming home, like, ah, oh, shit, I should ask that to those guys. Um, it's a really interesting, you should write that down. If you, if you ever go on Bill Maher's podcast, I would love to see you guys discuss that. Discuss what that same question why what do you think he would say i don't listen to his podcast me either i just <laughs> no okay um <laughs> adam thank you so do you have anything to plug uh yeah uh yeah i have a t oh. television show out called mr throwback with with uh tracy letts and um the the uh stephen curry the basketball player what yeah Get it's a comedy wait like a series mm-hmm with Stephen Curry. Yeah. Wow. Whoa, wait. It's awesome. It's the best thing I've ever done. Wait, tell me about this. You're going to love it. It's the best thing I ever did. I love Tracy Letts. I love you. You're going to love it. It's I, awesome. And it's, he's good? Stephen he's Curry? so funny. And it's by wow. the... I did a show with the Russo brothers called Happy Endings. Oh, yeah, yeah. Same love team. Same team. And uh, it's with Stephen. It's like a... So what's the premise? The premise is that I, I play a, a vintage salesman, like those guys that, that like, uh, you know, make videos online that are like, we're selling throwback hats, we're selling this. And I'm down on my luck and, and I, I need money really bad. And the only person from my life I know is my former middle school teammate, who's Stephen Curry. <laughs> <laughs> who, who plays himself. Yeah. And then I go and I, I take advantage of him. And, and where does Tracy Letts come in? He plays my dad. Oh wow! Yeah, who was my who was the coach? Who of the wrote team. it? Uh, I wrote it with the guys. Oh my god, that sounds amazing! It's awesome! It's so good! It's it's it, out now. The throwback. It's called Mr. Throwback. Mr. Throwback on Peacock, and then it'll be on NBC starting on September twelfth. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, um, September twelfth is literally the day after September eleventh. Um, uh, Nicole, Google. September 11th, I'm pretty day sure after. it is the day after. I don't think we have to. Google it. Nicole, you haven't Googled one thing I've asked for the whole show. Why would you Google that? Google. This is highly disputed. The 12th <sighs> is definitely after the 11th. 
Well, you know what's right before the, the 10th. 12th? The 10th comes before the 11th. What is a... No. To go back. <laughs> okay. So your show comes out on the 12th mm -hmm. of September. Mm -hmm. the, that is literally the day after my tour starts. Oh. Officially. Sorry. sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, I think I'm in <laughs> Seattle. Um... <laughs> it's called the end of the beginning of the end and as you know you can just go to my website officialdavidcross.com that is all the things i know portland sold out sold out that's great Big if you, theater, if you beautiful sell, if you I love sell, portland. you know what they call seattle and portland when you sell them out it's the tower one and tower two of the pacific northwest <laughs> 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 well that really uh and that that's but that's cra what's crazy is that's been a phrase that's been around since the 70s. <laughs> so, it is crazy. Oh, Jesus so Christ. Are you all right? So oh, my God. So Jeez, what the f fuck? I'm sorry. I'm having a little mini 9 11 right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> my uh, respiratory system is having a mini 9 11. I do an impression of an inappropriate rabbi trying on shoes that are too small for him in the, in the latest set. Oh, I love set. this. Can we do impress? Let me. I got, I got a few. You go. Okay. No, no. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to be doing this on tour. I don't want to blow it on the podcast. Right, I'll do mine. Okay. Do Wait, are you really not going to do it? I thought no. it was, All right. I'll do mine. All right. This is um. This is uh, Adam Duritz from the Counting Crows uh, hosting a political talk show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you What do you think of... Um, what's uh, What do you think of what's going on in Gaza right now? Uh, I think it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a. Uh, it's yeah. Aw yes, I think it's awful, and I think it's, you know, uh, I, I, I'm glad that people are protesting that yeah. Yahoo and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another. Oh fuck. Um. Uh this is uh J jay leno jay leno as a um jay leno in the in the as a as a newsie <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah uh, have you seen this <laughs> have you heard about this <laughs> oh, jesus all right adam and a pally thank you so much for coming on i end every episode with a question from my daughter who is seven great and so this is your question adam ready why do trees take so long to grow why do trees take so long to grow uh what was your daughter's name marlo well marlo it's because they're so important to the world and every part of them growing is another part of the world growing with them. So it takes a lot of time for the world to kind of heal itself, which is kind of what trees do. Hmm. Uh, what a nice answer. Usually my answers are like, uh, I don't know, just because. Come on, let's make this light. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, Adam, thank Pick you so up. much for coming down. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Really, I uh, I love you so much. You're a huge, I love you too. You're a huge... Um, you look like the kind of guy who would call people brother a lot, or say brother. Hey, brother. I don't really. I, I, I know. You just have that look and I know and vibe. I have that vibe. I, 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 but maybe I, it's because of the longer hair. Yes, which you told me yesterday looks like I've let myself go. <laughs> I don't know if I use that. You uh, did. You said, "Oh, you've let yourself go." I I like it. I think it's a good look. Thank you. I, I think I would. I think I said something like, "Oh, you must be working on a." No, you did not say that. Impoverished character who's mm. down on his luck. No, there was who, no. It was. I thought it was a retaliation you know, for being late. Maybe a little substance abuse. Uh, you know, found himself in Baton Rouge much longer than he expected to be. You said. You said, and I quote, "Did they find you in a pond?" <laughs> <laughs> Did they find you in a pond? All right. Uh, All right, brother. All right, thank you so much, David. You got it. Thank you. That was a headgum podcast. <laughs>